This poem is titled, Not Enough Heroes. When I am dead, I want you to just see if I'm not right in what I say, that the white man in his press is going to identify me with hate, said Malcolm X months before his death. And hate they did, and whitewashed and overlooked and erased because in the retelling of black history, there can't be too many heroes. You see, it's like Marvel, where the black characters are the sidekicks to the white heroes until we finally get one movie with a black hero and they milk it for eternity. Similarly, they let Martin be our black hero and now we hear the same story every year. Yes, we know he had a dream and that he advocated for nonviolence. Yeah, and that he loved white people, but why should I be forced to love my oppressor? Why do I have to respond nonviolently to acts of violence? Who do my oppressors think they are to tell me the correct way to beat the corrupt system that they built? It's essential that they excommunicate the idea that we can save or are even worth saving, which is why phrases like I am a man and Black Lives Matter have become politicized issues. The nature of our existence is only validated when it benefits the white man. Let's return back to Marvel and realize that our black superheroes villains are almost always also black because they can't let us think that the oppressed can overthrow their oppressors. So in our comics, T'Challa must fight Killmonger. Luke Cage has to take on Moses Magnum and Black Lightning can only battle Tobias Whale. In the same way, they had to make Malcolm Martin's villain to distract from the real charlatan that hides in the shadows because while white supremacy stays hidden like a pussycat in some bushes, young black students are casting the blame on a man who had the same goal as his supposed arch nemesis. This is what occurs when someone else is allowed to tell our narrative. The heroes are posed to be villains and the plot line becomes appropriated. What must we do to be treated equally even in our own stories? Malcolm becomes the picture of hate, but all he wanted was peace for his people. They love to discuss his transition from jail to hating the white devils, but choose to omit his realization that not all white people are racist. Martin is the depiction of love, but don't let that distract you from his revolutionary mindset. They emphasize how he worked alongside his white counterparts, but fail to include his belief that the white moderate is more a threat to equality than the KKK. Please don't give in to the deception that is forcibly fed by our system. The man who said nobody can give you freedom, you have to take it, is being taught as the enemy of the one who said freedom is not voluntarily given by the oppressor. It must be demanded by the oppressed. Let's not get it twisted. Malcolm and Martin took different paths, but they had the same destination. Different methods, but the same master. Different saviors, but the same skin color. Different tactics, but the same target on their backs. Because despite the similarities we've seen, there is one major difference between superheroes and their real life black figures. We know the superhero will always win, but the reality for our black leaders is a forfeit. You'll notice the mortality of our mentors is always misdiagnosed. See, what we're not gonna do is act like the government wasn't involved, but I'll leave that one for another day.